So in Endless Stealth, I finally hit level 90 and now I share my tricks from a noob for noobs on how I did it and how you might be able to do it so as well. And there's still more than five days left, so you could have quite a good chance on hitting level 90 or 85 or whatever your goal is. And I will share some of my tips with you so you can walk around like Ben Stiller and be very comfortable in Delft. And before you actually start going down in Delft, there are two things that are very recommendable. First, go to PU Racing and check the Endless Delft, so the cell phone, so the cell phone hardcore, whichever applies to you. Then you check the builds. It's unlikely you will go for Demi this late into the league. You basically check the proven builds, which are in the top, and then you can take these builds and modify them a bit. You will also need a new filter. There are some presets. You go to filterplate.xyz, then on presets, then you can search and you type in delve, hit enter, then you have endless delve base, then you can edit, apply, and then you can customize it a bit. For example, you see maps, they get hidden, and all of the other stuff that aren't relevant for endless delve. And for endless delve, the first part is the altar of ascendancy at like level 33, 55, 68, and 75, you get all of your ascendancy points. You just click the altar at the specific levels. You get a message in your chat and the altar should be shining. Then the next most important part, or actually the most important part, is Lily Roth. You can change some of your currencies. What you will need most likely is some orb of scourings and orb of regret. If you change to the endgame build, more or less, don't be afraid to use these purchases. And then for the gems, just from level 1 you get all of the different gems. You just can't equip them yet. You need to level 4 and up to level 35 or 38. Then the supports, they are 38. And up to that, they are all different gems that are available besides Awakening gems. One of the best defenses I could recommend is buying some Molten Shells and making them into Wall Molten Shells. It has quite a high chance you get a few walls during the leveling process. The latest you should get them at the outposts because they drop a lot of currency and there are also some currency nodes like these, contains currency and they show up very early on like the first few levels already. If you want like at level 12 you could get some wall orbs and then you just take the wall orbs and hit the wall and shell ideally one two three rip and then the fourth we actually hit it this gives you huge defenses if you have some armor so the next thing i recommend is determination at like level 24 that boosts your defenses quite a bit for the start probably steel gun is the best part for me if the molten shell triggers i get like 4k guard with like 11k armor without flasks up then when you already have your wall orbs you can corrupt some of the starting uniques by making new characters and then stealing the uniques basically and the wisdoms, putting them in the stash, doing that a few times and then corrupting them. I got kind of a lucky corrupt with maximum energy shield, but I don't benefit a lot from this yet. And you just check which uniques you have and then you go to PoE Wiki and then you can also corrupt your level one uniques from Delve and check which mod you can get. For example, on a bow, you could get a chance to get a fancy charge on kill, cold damage, fire damage, lightning damage, fist damage. You just need a few wall orbs and crafts. The uniques are pretty printable. Basically, you just make a new character, put it into stash, and delete the character, make a new character, and then you just spam it over and over until you hit the corrupt you really want. And for the auras, you kind of want vitality as well because later on there are three ground effects that really mess you up unless you're like a righteous fire character you have chaos degen and most people don't get chaos res for like level 60 70 then you get your first chaos res i'm kind of okay on chaos res right now 61 percent positive but i had to sacrifice some life and movement speed for that and for example my custom damage taking is with cold snap and molten shell because the cold snap generates me frenzy charges i have a 9k guard skill when I use the wall and shell. My last link is Flame Surge because that's specific for my build. It's a big damage buff. And for the gems, you could kind of use Chaos Golem or Stone Golem for some regen. But later on, they die pretty much instantly if anything hits them. So I removed it at like level 70. And for the auras, I run with Clarity, Vitality, Defiance Banner, and all linked to Arrogance with some. Mana reservation efficiency. I use the cluster 
near Templar. And then the mastery with increased mana reservation efficiency for skills. Then you can get close to low life with these four, then you could also add Petrify Blood. And if you're low life, you might want to take Pain Attunement if you're a spellcaster. This is making me kind of tanky. Then for defensive auras, I highly recommend Determination. And for the start, Purity of Elements instead of a damage aura because you are immune to elemental ailments until you have better flask setups. Then I would use these twos if you want to stay defensive, but your all rest is quite good as well as you are immune to most of the ailments and you really want to defense, then you could also add Grace. But I was lacking damage, so I add some damage auras. This is basically my setup for the defenses. Should help you quite a lot. And for Delph, you often get stuck between a lot of mobs. So it's very recommendable to get some phasing. For example, you can get a Quartz Flask really early on. In the middle, you see a chance to suppress spell damage as well as phasing. And that lets you pass through all of the mobs. Another thing you can get is Wildering Step at level 10. And then you can put it like on a left click. And then you're phasing quite a bit until you attack. And it takes up a movement skill. And once you hit level 34, you can equip phase run. But in my opinion, the weathering step is actually way better. The phase run also removes all of your frenzy charges. So that's kind of a downside. If you're lucky to find some searching eye jewels, then you can roll phasing on them. And I was super lucky on hitting the phasing kind of quickly with like 40 alts, also getting a life roll on it. Then later on, like I, I did it like this and I was super happy about it. So I swapped to this for the most part, use weathering step. And for the amount of flasks that you could expect at like level 90, I picked up all of them and I have them here on my character as well as here. These are all the utility flasks and have way more life and mana flasks. These are all of the resist flasks. I got one aquamarine, but it's not that good anyway. I got four diamond flasks or three. I also got six quicksilver flasks and these are all of my defensive flasks. I got one sofa flask, which is kind of good with the consecrated ground. These are the flasks that I use occasionally, but I kind of want to stick with the life flask for now. It's very recommendable to have an enduring mana flask, as well as a granite. Generally, my gear overview, I was super lucky with a six link. I just picked up all of the six socket and I thought, okay, this one could maybe work. And I spent three fusings on it and was lucky. You kind of can survive with four link. I had it for the most part. I had it like level 80. I got my six link. Nothing much about the gear. I'm just going over it really quickly. That's what I equipped now. Then for all of the uniques that I found, these are just like the cheap uniques that are very common. Then the rest of the cheap uniques and then the actually rare uniques. I got an Alpha's Hole, um, Greed's Embrace, Primordial Chain, Obscurantis, Cosprey's Wall. Rimsoro is not rare, but it's very useful. Then what actually was rare was Soul Rest, Death's Hand but it's not that useful. But this one is like build enabling. Then here are all of the boots that were kind of decent with movement speed. And I picked up most of the boots. These are my 10% boots. These have 0%, but they have a movement speed enchant. 15%, 20%, and 25%. This is like end game. Only got a few good boots. Then 30% boots, 30% boots. And these were my boots for the most time because they actually had life and some risks. And then I swapped to some Big beefy boots with strength and life and some chaos rares. They are like peak defenses. And then I forgot the 30% movement speed basically and feel super slow. Then I got two synthesis bases. We just armor and chance to avoid being shocked. Very bad ones. I had a fossil with the corrupt on it, but I wasn't sure if it corrupts the item completely or it just adds a corrupt modifier in the explicits and not implicit. I done messed up. Bricked some good boots, item level 83. I got a beefy astral plate helmet with over 100 life. And the cluster jewels, I watched Kobe play also brands and he was farming so many jewelry nodes and I did too. But I was super unlucky. First of all, you kind of don't expect to get any cluster jewels if you want to go to end stuff. And secondly, if you expect some, then the chance to get the one that you actually need is super, super slim. I would need like two brand clusters. I got the crit chance flask factoration. Then I got a 12 passive one for elite damage. Then got kind of a beefy amulet. I got a crackling lance with level 21 from a node. I got a few clusters, some tubules with life. An iolite ring, item level 82, which is kind of rare. Then a few influence bases, but nothing really outstanding. 
What was outstanding though is a chaos cluster with 8 passives and this small cluster with energy shield, flat energy shield, 2 strength and 25% increased effect per node, which is kind of strong if I went to energy shield route. Then I got an academic and then for the delve specific nodes, I got an astral plate with plus one number to specters and 40 plus res and life. Then I got another plus one specter node with some life and nothing else basically. Then I got a curse on hit ring with despair, which is kind of strong with the stats, but no life. Then I got a flammability on hit. Actually, I hit level 90 on the way to my first fire node, which I kind of need with flammability and wasn't worth swapping anymore, but it just would give me like 60 life and 30 res of something. And I have the same in Sapphire Ring, which would also give me 30 res if I bless it a little bit better and a lot of strength, which is damage for me with Iron Will, which is this node. Then another Despair Ring, then Fire Damage leeched this life, then a lot of Mana Rings, damage taken as X Rings. I'm just going over them quickly because they aren't as good. And you can pause if you want. Take a better look at them and some max res shields, which could be kind of good. And I got two five links a wall. I also got a majestic plate, which was truly majestic as it has 70 plus life, 30 res, and an additional curse and first damage reduction. If I didn't have my six link by then, when I found it at like 81, then I would have six socket this and then we probably went with a five link. And that were all the notable stuff. If you want to level as soon as possible to level 90 or whatever your goal is, I would recommend sticking between death. 100 and 140 ish where the mobs are level 80 to 83 and then you get the best experience because on the later depths you get some nasty mods like multiple projectiles and i skipped most of the wall cities and outposts because they're kind of rippy in my opinion just went down and then you can go a bit sideways and then when you look at the voltaxic generator the things i would recommend most is boosting light radius then the darkness resistance getting more flares and radius on the flares. This should be quite cheap to get the darkness resistance up to 75 and the light radius to 150. If you want to go and break some walls, then this is kind of what you can expect. I used some of the fossils to craft my gear, especially to get some chaos res and life. These are how much you can expect until level 90. I just go over them quickly. And for the defenses, you go into your passive tree and then you check block and see which you can actually use. I would try to get a lot of spell block and attack block. Then I also got glancing blows, but I take 65% of the damage that I would block. And then you can check where you are on the tree and which block nodes are available for you. I would very likely stick with the remnant of empires goat hide buckler because it has 28% chance to block attack damage and 30% chance to block spell damage, which is a huge shield. And it also generates you a lot of endurance charges and helps you with your resist. And one of the great block masteries is this one, because it gives you another 5% block chance. And if you look at my defenses, I'm at 78 and 75%. But if I remove my glancing blows, I'm at 39% and 49%, which is also quite good, but I will keep that for now. I only would swap out of this shield when I get a shaper shield and can roll some life recovery on block on it because it's super strong shield. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye bye.